Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And today I wanted to talk about art school, a place of pure madness where you learn whether you have what it takes to make it as an artist out here in the real world. I learned so many invaluable things at art school and I truly believe I wouldn't be where I am today without it. But today I want to talk about a few things that you will not learn there and that you should probably try to learn outside of it because it's all very important. The first major blind spot in art school that I noticed was about business stuff and tax related stuff. Now you might be thinking, obviously art school is not going to teach you business, but what I mean by that is um, that a lot of art careers are a little bit different than um, other types of jobs that you go into where most of like the tax and business filing kind of stuff is covered by your employer. A lot of artists are freelancers, they work for themselves or they work on like gigs and contracts and it's going to be very very different. Um, there's going to be a lot more responsibilities that you have to worry about financially and it's the type of thing that's not super intuitive necessarily. Obviously this depends heavily on what country you live in but based on my experience in Canada Canada and the US, um, it can really be tricky and it can really catch people off guard, particularly regarding taxes. Now, when you're making um, money in, at least in the US, and it reaches over a certain point um, and you're self-employed, you need to do taxes every um, four times a year, basically. Uh, you have to do it quarterly or else you'll be in huge trouble. And additionally, um, it might end up being a lot more taxes than you're used to paying because um, a lot of companies and stuff, if you work for them, before uh, they will like cover some of your taxes and it's just different like there's there's additional tax for being self-employed um, it's like a whole other thing so yeah anyway that's just for being a freelancer in the United States um, but it's not just that it's, it's other things too like um, if you're making a lot of money as an artist it's really important that you think about like becoming an LLC there's just <laughs> there's all this like boring grindy adult stuff that you have to worry about um, when you're an artist and I do feel like to some level it would be good if art schools like at least mention that that might be something you need to look into because uh, like I said um, though there are many like permanent company positions for artists I do find that like maybe over half of the way that most full-time artists are living um, it's not like that it's most likely that you're going to have to be either like self-employed or on gig contracts and that kind of thing. Um, so I highly recommend if you're in art school and you're about to go off into the adult world, just start slowly, gradually looking into it for your country, um, just so that it's not quite so much of a shock uh, when you have to um, leave and, and start your adult life, um, because it's not the type of thing that most colleges will, will tell you at all. They won't um, teach you how to do any of that and they won't even tell you what you need to do. Um, yeah, money stuff basically. <laughs> The second thing that you're going to want to learn before you go to art school um, that they will not teach you there is uh, how to take care of your tools and safety things regarding your supplies. Um, I've mentioned this before because this is like a huge, something that bothered me hugely in school, um, that even in the first year most basic painting class, they do not tell you what paints are toxic, what paints cannot get on your skin, what paints you have to wash your hands really, really, really like thoroughly before you go and get lunch, for example. Um, and as a result, I think <laughs> probably my health and the health of many other uh, people who hadn't done a ton of painting before um, was probably jeopardized at my school. And I think that's going to be true in a lot of other art schools as well, because you get mixed in with people who paint and that's like their main thing, right? Um, so there'll be people who are mainly good with sculpting or mainly did digital art before, who know absolutely nothing about painting, um, who, you know, for example, don't understand how flammable oil paints are and how careful you have to be with those kind of things. Um, and uh, also you don't really learn how to properly clean your brushes. Um, this is a huge deal if you're going from, you know, those like plasticky dollar store type brushes to um, really expensive like $20 sable brushes, you will be heartbroken if you leave acrylics in the roots of your sable brushes. I did it multiple times and I couldn't understand why um, my brushes were getting ruined, like I thought I was cleaning them well enough, but I clearly wasn't. Um, that is not something that you can necessarily expect your art school to teach you. So um, especially when you're adding in those elective classes where you're learning a new skill, something that you haven't been doing before school, just 
you know, look at, look at little like beginner mistakes articles or something about whatever it is you're going into. It doesn't have to take very long. Usually it's something that's extremely obvious to people who've been doing the thing that you're doing, but because you're an absolute beginner and you're being put in classes with people who do take it pretty seriously and who do know a lot about it, um, it's just something that I always recommend. Um, like I said, with electives classes, sometimes your teachers can be good and they spot you as a complete beginner and they help you, you know, like understand like, hey, you know, don't put <laughs> carmine paint on your skin. Um, don't, <laughs> don't, you know, uh, smoke a cigarette or light a candle next to your oil painting materials because you'll blow up, um, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, uh, all of that is, is something you should be thinking about and just being careful with your health because our supplies actually can be kind of dangerous. This next one is actually kind of an addition to the one I was just talking about, which is that um, at art school you won't get uh, like tutorial style training. And I think this is confusing for a lot of people who've never gone before or um, who don't know much about art school. I think that people picture art school as like the teachers up there telling you like, this is how you draw, this is how you paint, that kind of thing. That is not the structure, at least of my art school at all. They assume competency in everything that you're doing. Um, the only class I had where it felt more like this is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you're going to approach this project is like my um, fabrics class, like when we were felting, she explained pretty clearly exactly how to do it. Um, but generally with anything else, uh, they're going to say, you know, like here's your prompts. Like, we want you to make a sculpture uh, with found materials. We want you to uh, make a painting with like um, part of your body instead of a brush. You know, they'll just tell you to do that and then they'll leave you to your own devices. So it's not going to be like a how-to kind of thing where they're walking you through stuff. Um, you're more likely to get like an intermediate or advanced tips throughout the class. So if you're really not familiar with how to do something like um, you're trying sculpting for the first time ever, you haven't done it since you were like a kindergarten or with like Play-Doh or something, um, you might want to just brush up on some of the basics again. This time instead of for safety, um, for like very, very basic information if you're like completely out of your depth. Um, I don't want this to discourage you guys from trying new things in art school because I knew many people who found a new passion by doing that uh, in school. So while it might have kind of a steep learning curve and be a little difficult at first, um, it's still really worthwhile. But yeah, it might be the kind of thing where <laughs> you might be a little surprised if you think that art school is going to be more step by step. It's really not. Like generally, they're going to te te teach every class as if this is your main thing, the thing that you've been doing the most, and they're not going to go back to basics with you unless you like specifically ask, and even then, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> So in short, basically, you might need to do a little bit of catch up if you're taking a class in something you've never done before, but please don't let that discourage you from doing so because oftentimes after, you know, maybe a few shaky assignments that aren't your best work um, and a little bit of panicking, you quickly get to the same level as the other students in the class and you'll be able to enjoy it a lot and learn a tremendous amount very quickly. Um, so I highly encourage you to still try it and just don't get too shocked if the first couple of classes are a little rough. Next, I want to talk about your options and how your art school might not talk about all your options. Um, a lot of art schools are still very old fashioned and the faculty can be as well. Um, typically, I think most art schools have at least one faculty member who's like really tuned in to what's going on with the art world and staying up to date, but you shouldn't be too surprised if you run into professors who give maybe insanely outdated advice or don't know about things like Webtoon, Patreon, uh, social media jobs, uh, art YouTubers, you know, this is stuff that even today um, you might find a lot of adults, like older adults, who don't know anything about it, or if they know about it, they don't understand that that can be a job, like a, a really well-sustaining career for an artist. They're going to look at something like that and think that it's a fad. Um, this is the same thing I ran into with uh, teachers who were like extremely phobic of <laughs> anything that looked even slightly anime. Um, and you know, even though like we've seen things like Turning Red and um, uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil and all these shows that like clearly uh, have tons of people who like anime on their staff um, who are clearly living out like very uh, fulfilling jobs and adding a lot of that aesthetic into their um, mainstream Western art, uh, you still are going to get a lot of resistance from people who are in this like old school mentality. And uh, if you're going into comics or animation, like they might be thinking like maybe 20 or 30 years 
behind what's actually going on. Um, there are also some teachers who will like discourage things like becoming a tattoo artist or other like fringe art jobs, even though like your chances of being a successful tattoo artist are a lot higher than some of the things that they might actually suggest to you. Um, so uh, I just, you know, mainly say that so that you don't get discouraged if you're in art school for a while and you're feeling like the goals that you have are being discouraged or um, people are acting like they don't make sense. Um, some of that is just because they've been sipping on old school juice a little too long and they're not, um, you know, <laughs> they're not very online so they don't really understand what all the options are. And um, that being said, like there's still a lot you can get from your teachers regarding your opportunities and you should stay like respectful of what they say and everything. but. Um, you know, keep in the back of your head that sometimes when it comes to like modern changes in the art world, you might know more than them and, um, you know, not to get overly discouraged if they're being <laughs> really, uh, negative or pushing back on something that you know would work or, you know, might work for you because honestly, if I had listened to those voices, I don't know what job I'd be doing right now. This one's definitely more practical and it was something that completely blew my mind and took me off guard when I first realized it about my school. And I think this might be the case in a lot of other schools too, which is honestly unfortunate. Um, but anything to do with software, anything at all, like no matter what, they will tell you to buy a new expensive software that you've never used before and then not teach you how to use it and not be able to answer questions about it. Um, I had uh, multiple times where I was working on, say, an animation in Toon Boom, which is an incredibly um, industry level, extremely complicated program that I had never used before. And my animation teacher could not help me with even the basic steps of how to use Toon Boom. Um, I had a design class where the teacher straight up told us, do not ask me any questions about After Effects. I cannot help you look it up on like Skillshare or Linda or whatever. And it's a bit, it feels a bit like a slap in the face when you're, um, you know, paying tuition to go somewhere and, and learn stuff and they tell you straight up, like, look it up online. Um, it kind of hurts, <laughs> but um, honestly, like, I don't blame, I certainly don't blame my animation teacher for not knowing every animation program. He could help us with so many other things, um, so I don't blame him at all. I do think my design teacher should probably know how to use After Effects since it was a big part of the class um, and she was so dismissive about it. Like, at, at least my animation teacher, like, tried to help out. But anyway, yeah, you might have trouble getting your teachers to help you with your software problems um, and even your software basics, which <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's, it's a little bit hard to understand um, at first because it feels like that's the type of thing that a teacher would help you with, but um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, like the only time I've ever been brought to tears by um, like homework frustration, I think <laughs> since like elementary school was when I was working on an After Effects project and I literally couldn't get it to do anything. Um, I don't know why that program was so hard for me to learn. I, I was already in the Adobe ecosystem, like it should have been pretty easy, but man, I barely got that assignment done and it was an absolute mess because I just couldn't get the program to work for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly just telling you that so that you know that that might be an issue because if you're expecting a lot of help and like, um, you know, guidance when it comes to new software, I, I just think you might not want to expect that because at least in my school, I did not, I did not get that. So yeah. Thank you to all of my wonderful patrons, including Winterheart, Harold Bird, T Hill Music, Tack Afton, Teddy Spaghetti, Avant Grape, Dendro Was Stolen, Haley for Spookable, Vegas, Ah, it's Jamal, Kay, Rodrigo, Mom Milk, Kadaria, Dudley Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Dulce Mori VT, Lilia Lura, The Expressive Poker Face, Marcy Axolotl, Tsubaki, Michael Lavali, Cutie Pie, Rune Rain Crow, Rainwater Pulls, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, Insadmia, Yaboy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Libla Libla.